Hello and welcome to another week of Holy Troublemakers TV with Newman Congregational Church in Rumford, Rhode Island. I am Christy Winveen, the Minister for Faith Formation, and I am so glad you have joined us for another episode. We are made of stories and stardust. We tell the stories of holy troublemakers and unconventional saints, people of faith who have worked for love, justice, and compassion to inspire us, make us bold, and connect us to each other in the love that makes us one. During this season of Lent, we're going to explore the Gospels and the life of Jesus to see what it has to teach us about how to live our life here on earth now in these days. As we observe Lent together, I hope that we will find new and inspiring ways that Jesus will inspire us to live. Have you ever been really angry about an injustice? Are there things that you see happening in our world that really upset you? Sometimes those things are far away. Currently, I'm thinking about the conflict in Ukraine, or maybe sometimes the conflicts that have been happening for a long time in Latin America, or even in Haiti. Maybe it bothers you when immigrants are treated unfairly. Maybe you notice that people who identify in an LGBTQ community are treated with less rights or care than those who are not in those communities. Maybe you see children with little to eat while you have a table full of food and you think, I have so much food that I could share if I could just get it to them. Well, I could go on and on and on here about the many different injustices in our world and these don't even scratch the surface, do they? But I do think that these examples are a good introduction for our Bible story today. So if you will, go grab your Bible and let's open to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 21 at verse 12. Then Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he cured them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things that he did and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became angry and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies? You have prepared praise for yourself. He left them and went out of the city to Bethany and spent the night there. It sounds like Jesus was really angry in this passage. So angry that he flipped the tables. Uh, I wonder, what does that make you think about Jesus? You know, for a long time, I used to think that Jesus was calm and quiet and reserved. You know, I thought that you know, he was never going to make waves because when he healed somebody or performed a miracle, he would say, shh, don't tell anyone. Mm, but you know, people always talked. And for some reason, I just always thought that was the mysterious quality about him, that the individuals that were healed would go say something, and that's just how Jesus was, and he didn't really want the attention. Mm. But as I got older, I started to realize that just because Jesus might have been calm and collected at some times, he was also humorous and sarcastic and angry. He had all the human emotions that we have. So what was Jesus so angry about? Well, injustices were happening right in the temple where God was supposed to be liberating people. The place where people were supposed to come and they were able to be healed or freed and helped. And the people that were supposed to help free them or heal them were stealing their money. Here's a way to think about it. Have you ever needed something and you borrowed the money? Sometimes when we borrow from a sibling or from, from a friend, they don't ask for interest to be paid back, meaning they don't ask for extra money. They might just give it to you and say, well, here's the 50 cents. You want to buy a soda? Here's the, the 50 cents. Take it. But let's say someone came to the temple and they wanted to buy something for a sacrifice, say a, a dove is a sacrifice, and they didn't have the $10. So they could go to a money changer, and the money changer would you know, tell them, sure, I'll borrow you the money so you can buy your dove, but instead of $10 for your dove, it will cost you 20 So someone who was already struggling in the world with money 
was going to struggle even more just to perform their spiritual practice of sacrifice. I'm not very good at probably describing this interest stuff, but I hope you understand that the bottom line is they were asking for extra money from people who didn't have it. And we can still see this happening today with money lenders offering the opportunity to have money, but then they offer it at a very high rate. And so the people that have loaned money and originally a lower amount of money have to pay a very large amount of money. And it just hurts them. It hurts them very badly because they already didn't have money and now it's going to keep going and going and going. And why do people borrow money? Because sometimes they need it. And so it was the same thing with the sacrificial doves. The money they asked for for the sacrificial doves also prevented some people from entering the temple at all. If they didn't have the money, they, they wouldn't be able to perform their sacrifice. And I suppose this is why part of the reason why Jesus' actions gathered in the blind and the lame to be healed. When we, talk, when we talked about the people with leprosy a couple weeks ago, I learned that the priests in the temple, who were supposed to be the ones to heal and proclaim healing among people who come to try to, to get rid of their illness or their sickness. But instead of the priest standing in the temple at that moment, Jesus is standing in the temple at that moment and he heals the people. And he heals the people because the priests were too busy trying to make money instead of healing people and instead of freeing them from whatever their worries or their burdens were. He flipped their tables, didn't he? He said, I will come and I will heal when you are not. So there's a lot going on in this passage here, isn't, isn't it? I wonder what might you take away from Jesus, the holy troublemaker, flipping tables. My takeaway is that sometimes we can all be like the priests who have decided to seek something for ourselves rather than liberate and heal others. Jesus wants to flip my table when I have been selfish or judgmental or unloving, apathetic or uncaring. Jesus wants me to see what matters most. Jesus wants us to flip the tables with him to bring about a different way of living. One that is guided by love, hospitality, respect, kindness, and fairness. Jesus wants us to show the world God's expansive, never-ending, always pursuing love for us and that love for others. So with that, let's pray. Holy One who flips tables and teaches us how to live a more full life, will you help us to hear what we need to hear and see what we need to see? Will you show us the places where tables need to be flipped? Will you show us the injustices that we can help make right? Will you give our feet actions and our hands compassion? May we be a people who are filled with love and hospitality. Amen.